Hi guys, Allison here, the Board Housewife, um, and I am so ready to get on with this next episode. Um, I think it's kind of an interesting topic. Uh, the topic is why do we have to grow up? And I don't mean that in a sense of like, oh, I want to be a kid forever, <laughs> but I mean it more so in like the stigma of like getting old and like what society does. So stick with me. This episode will be fun. It might be a little heady. Um, I got drunk in the bar the other night with a bunch of old people. I'll tell you in a minute. And um, I was like sitting there on my phone like, oh my god, I'm having an epiphany. This is amazing and brilliant. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't that brilliant, but I read it, you know, the next day. But it had a lot of, like, you know, substance to it and very specific to that moment that I'll share in just another moment. But anyways, um, yeah, so I think it'll be a fun episode, an interesting concept. And um, if you hang on with me for a minute, I think you guys will enjoy my outlook on what I think it means to get older and why we have these like stigmas and rules and you know ideas of like what getting old should be so anyways <laughs> um sit back and relax guys grab your beverage of choice i have my bulvedere here um and cheers let's have some fun First things first is the cocktail of the hour. This week I chose um, to sip on a Belvedere cocktail. Uh, I haven't had one of these in such a long time. It's basically a Negroni made with bourbon or rye. I chose to make it with rye this week. Um, but there's this little uh, Cajun restaurant in town that Cliff really likes. And the bartender there is actually a teacher. And he really likes his bourbon, and he made one of these for me, and I had totally forgotten this as a very classic cocktail. Um, and of course, I like better things and bourbon, so what better than a Belvedere? So, hello, and what a fancy name, the Belvedere. <laughs> um, you have to say it in that low, sexy voice, right? Uh, you guys are probably pretty shocked that I can go that low, right? Um, no. Anyways, uh, so it called for one and a half ounces of rye or bourbon. I use three ounces of rye because uh, I like my rye and my bourbon. Um, one ounce of Campari, one ounce of sweet vermouth. Stir that baby up, strain it over ice, and if you're feeling fancy, garnish it with an orange peel. Um, and that's, that's it, guys. That's all it is. So I don't think you can make this non-alcoholic. I'm sorry. There's just some that you can't do. So, sorry. Sorry, ladies who cannot drink or men who are not drinking. Um, but I hope you guys have something yummy that you can sip on for this episode. I'm going to tell you the story of in the bar the other night. So, we have an American Legion in town. And it is old school. And it is like there are no rules in this place. <laughs> there are rules. But they have karaoke. Sometimes they have a band. Um, and if you don't know what American Legion is, um, you have to be typically a member. If you don't, typically you have to like pay a cover or something to get in there. But a lot of them have bars. Um, they're all over the United States. Um, you know, they're like your Shriners or your uh, Lion Lions Club or like I don't know if that's if they all still exist anymore but um, this one is specifically for veterans and I think you can be a member without necessarily being a veteran I'm not quite sure on that um, but you know you it's like being in a club and so this particular club has like a few pool tables and a bar 
they still smoke in this bar. <laughs> like it's really, <laughs> there's some places around here that I'll have to tell you about. Uh, but yeah, it's really like going back in time. They have a big dance floor. Um, sure people rent that baby out for wedding receptions. You know, all that fun stuff. So um, Cliff and I like to go there sometimes. Keeps us humble. And uh, the drinks are cheap. Um, and we're usually the youngest people in there. So it's kind of fun. Because most of the people, like I said, are like veterans and retired age. Um, so last weekend we went there and I was sitting at the bar with Cliff and he was in his um, Marine Corps uniform uh, chatting it up. And so trying to spread the word like, hey, <laughs> I'm the Marine recruiter in town if anybody knows anyone. Um, but no, so we were sitting there and he, you know, all, so all the veterans are like all over him. So I'm just, I'm kind of just like observing and watching and there weren't very many people in there. Um, but I was just like, wow, like these people still have a lot of life in them. And like this one guy was telling these really funny jokes and I was like, you know, it's kind of sad cause it's like, this is where they go. And it's obviously where they feel comfortable at. Like, you know, maybe they wouldn't feel comfortable at a younger bar, but it's like, you know, got me thinking, like, why don't they feel comfortable going to a younger bar? So I'm sitting there typing, and I'm, like, saying all this, like, in my type, like, I can't, I can't put it as, I'm, I don't speak as eloquently as I can write. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm finding out. Uh, so I've kind of thought about adding a blog version to this. This is total sidetrack, and I'm sorry. Um, uh, like, if you guys are interested in me potentially doing a blog version as well, and maybe like corresponding ideas, like, I don't know. I'm not ready for it yet, but let me know if you guys are interested because, like, I write a lot better than I speak. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so I'm sitting there, and I'm ba and basically the the thought was, let me see if I can paraphrase it. Um, getting older, and once you get to a certain age, or once you are showing yourself at a certain age, society, you become almost like a scary monster to society because society is like, oh no, I don't want you around. Because you're going to remind me of what my fate is. So if you're in your 60s or your 70s or maybe even younger, like if you're in your late 30s, early 40s, and you're trying to go to like some cool fun clubs, like maybe they don't let you in or maybe people are weird to you or maybe you feel out of place because you're like the oldest person in there. But it's like that pressure and those feelings are a societal thing. You should be able to, at any age, to go into any bar that you want to um, or do anything that you want to as long as you are physically able to. You know, I mean, obviously, as you get older, your body kind of gets harder to do stuff. Um, but so I was like, I think society rejects getting old because, and older people, because it reminds them of what our inevitable doom is, right? <laughs> Which is death. <laughs> Getting old means dying. Um, I know. I told you guys, hang, hang with me. All right, it's getting, it's getting, it's a little heavy in this beginning. But I was like, and I was sitting there, and this is part of the thought too, because we're sitting here in this bar with a few old people, and I looked really cute that night, and I dressed up, and I was like, I kind of wanted to go to like some of the places that had a younger crowd, because I wanted to show off, like. I, my vanity and that part of my ego was like, wow, I look so cute tonight. I'm not looking for men. I'm happily married. But I know that this is a ticking time bomb. And one day I'm going to wake up and be like, man, I miss my 30-year-old body. I already wake up and think, man, I miss my 22-year-old body. I miss my 18-year-old body, you know? So it's like, as long as I can continue to pull this off, I want to show it off. And then I, and then that's also, I was like, wow, like, I don't want to hang out here with these cool old people just because I want to go out so people can, like, see me walk around and people can be like, wow, that girl looks really good. 
And it's like, again, it has nothing to do with picking people up. It is just pure vanity and wanting, and my husband looked good la- that night too. Like we, w- we looked so good together. So it's just like, the, but then I was like, that's wrong, Alice. <laughs> Because it doesn't matter how old you get. If you want to dress up and if you want to look cute. And if I wanted to wear that same outfit I was wearing the other night. At the age of 50. At the age of 70. If I can fit in that outfit. I should be able to wear it. You know. So it's like. What is that? And so then that's where my mind started going. Because I was like you know. It's not fair that. Oh we just get to a certain age. And it's like oh well you know my life's over. And it's like, I understand too, like when people have kids, like your attention and your focus becomes on your kids. So maybe there's some things that you don't do anymore because you're being a mom or a dad. Um, but yeah, so that night, I'm going to get into more in a minute, <laughs> but that night is where like, I kind of had this idea before and I'd like thought on it before, but it just like, threw it in perspective again because I felt bad like here these old people are and this like you know like the bars dive you know and there's dives everywhere around here but it's just like I don't know they just felt kind of outcasted a little bit maybe I was making more of it than it is but anyways anyways (laughs) with all that being said that I just said uh I do think that as a society, we are growing and ageism is becoming less and less. Um, there is definitely still stigmas and stuff I see on different Facebook groups I'm involved in and just like little things on the internet. Um, women specifically still get shamed for wearing clothes from the junior section or wearing something that might be out of their age range. Um I know I reference Sex in the City a lot, but there's this one season, I don't, I think it might be season five or something like that, Um, if you're a fan of that show, uh, Carrie Bradshaw, she is doing a cover for her book, and Samantha and her have a little tiff because they have different ideas of what she should look like on the book, and Carrie explicitly says like, Samantha's like, I've seen you wear stuff like that before, and Carrie's like, not anymore. I'm a grown-up now or something like that. And it's like, you're free to change, you know, what you want. And sometimes I do think getting older is just about comfort, right? So I'm not looking for a mate anymore. My husband loves me in sweatpants. He loves me in jeans. He loves me in skirts. He loves me in shorts. I can't not look good, right? He loves me no matter what I'm wearing. Um, But it's like, Are you doing that just because you're like, oh, I can't wear that anymore? Like, I can't wear a crop top anymore because I'm 30 years old or I'm 35 or I'm 45. Like, you know what I mean? Or are you just, like, not comfortable wearing it because you're like, I don't like it when my belly gets cold? Or, you know, and if it's, like, a weight thing, like, that's a whole other story that we're not even getting into. Let's say you like crop tops or you did and then one day you wake up and you're just like, I shouldn't wear that anymore. And it's like, if you want to be in your mid-50s wearing a crop top, wear a crop top. Um, I'll say this. I heard from a story from somebody. I'm not going to say. I'm <laughs> trying really hard not to name names. Um, but their friend, they're in their 50s, and their friends told her that the fellow women that over the age of 50 – it's unacceptable, like, you shouldn't wear thongs. That women over the age of 50 shouldn't wear thongs. And it's like, first of all, um, thongs play a purpose in wardrobe because if you don't like panty lines, that solves a lot of issues, you know? Sometimes, you know, you gotta watch out for the whale tail, but as long as, you know, nowadays, I mean, God, in the 90s and 2000s, we had to worry about whale tail all the time. But with these high-waisted, the high-waisted trend, like, you don't even have to worry about that anymore. All you have to worry about now is a big old panty line. So these women told her that, like, she couldn't wear 
a thong anymore because she was over a certain age. And I'm just like, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. If you don't want to wear a thong because it's uncomfortable in your butt, well, okay, I understand that. (laughs) Nobody said they were comfortable. Um, You know, I've found a few that are kind of comfortable, but like, yeah, there's something up your butt. So I understand (laughs) if you don't like thongs. But to say to someone, because of your age, you can't wear them. And then that's the point. It's like, you do what you want to do. I'm, I just think it's weird that as society, it's just like, oh, you're old now. So you have to wear big fluffy things to cover up your oldness. Why? Why do you have to do that? Why can't you wear whatever the fuck you want to wear? No matter how old you are. So my point is. I think that like society is changing um, in so many great ways. And as far as accepting people for who they are, we're, we still got to work on the age thing though. So I think people like Jennifer Lopez, Shakira, Jennifer Aniston. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Did I write any other names? Well, just the women on Sex and the City in general, like how that show, what that show did for women that are above a certain age, um, they're really like making a new path for women. They're making a new path for what sexy is at different ages. Um, And the fact that you can be sexy in your 50s. Like, I think... Two generations ago, maybe three generations ago, you were an old maid if you were 30 years old. You know, like, all right, she's popped out a few kids and now she just sits at home, like, you know, tending to everybody. Like, I don't, I'm just being stupid. But my point is, like, to think that a woman in her 50s is still one of the, like, sexiest women on the planet is just amazing. And I love that. And, like a lot of these stars and celebrities are taking their careers further and like the roles that they're taking it's like you know back in the day as an actress um once you hit a certain age the only roles that you're gonna play are like the mother or the haggard lady or something you know but instead like and like even Meryl Streep like they've made a way for themselves where they can continue to be feminine and attractive um, and do what they want to do in that age. And I think that's like Susan Sarandon even. Like I think of her in that movie, um, the moms movie where like the moms come to town. Um, Bad moms, that's it. (laughs) The moms. Susan Sarandon looks fucking awesome in that movie. She is still so badass. And it's just like, yeah, they're just killing it. And I think that's really cool that we have that because it's like we can we can do all this stuff and we can still be ourselves and um you know, we don't have to you know, fit in a box to like enjoy certain things. So, uh as I've explained in another episode, um I am on TikTok now. TikTok is a very interesting and entertaining world. People do a lot of stuff on there, and you get to see a lot of things on TikTok that you might not know was out there. Um, And the fun thing is, is that, again, the ageism thing, old people are breaking barriers, guys. There's, like, old 80-year-olds on TikTok, and they're really fun. Um, And they're really funny. It's cool to see them interact with, like, our technology of our era and, like, how they incorporate it. It's just really cool. So like I said, society is changing. Um, And millennials are really funny on there because apparently there's this whole thing that like the Gen Z makes fun of the millennials for because there's a whole group of millennials or a whole like thing that they're obsessed with Disney and they dress up and they go to Disney. And I was like trying to explain this to my husband and he was like, is it cosplay? And I don't know if you could actually consider this um, cosplay or not because I'm like, well, I think they just dress up as Disney characters on a regular basis. Like, 
their their regular clothes kind of look like Disney stuff sometimes. And so, but anyways, they're obsessed with Disney. They go to Disney. I'm kind of on board. I've actually never been to Disney World. And so um, I would love to go there <laughs> and experience that. Um, I've been to Disneyland, but never Disney World. Um, and also the outfits are adorable. So hello. Um, but yeah, there's just like a whole group of people that are really crazy about it. Um, which is really fun. And then there's also like this girl that I saw on TikTok. She gets those purses. I'm sure you guys have seen them that look like a taco or like a piece of cake or a cupcake, um, a watermelon, uh, like I don't know what else she had, a unicorn. <laughs> and she has all these like I bet she probably has like hundreds of purses. And her TikTok is her just like going through and showing her like different categories like this is my food one this is my baked goods one this is my you know fairy tale one like I don't know she just has so many um and then her entire room she has like care bears everywhere it looks like it's if you're gonna be stereotypical it looks like a little tween like a preteen's room like a sixth grader would just be like obsessed with this room right so, and, and so I was just like, that is so cool that she just is like, this is me and I love these. And, you know, those bags aren't cheap either. Like she, you can get them from like Kate Spade or um, Betsy Johnson makes a lot of them. And then she's part of some other like thing, uh, Quirk something or other that like sends a monthly purse. It's like a subscription. Anyways, um, but it's like she just totally owns it and she dresses all fun and bright and colorful and she's probably my age at least and it's like people have commented and like, aren't you a little old for that? And she's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so it's like, cool, like you're into that, like do it. Like I still love coloring and like I know that the coloring thing has kind of become a little bit more acceptable because they have those like adult coloring books. But I like my Lisa Frank. So this year for Christmas, um, last year I saw it. They had this like giant activity thing of Lisa Frank. And I saw it and I wanted it so bad and I didn't tell my husband. So this year he was like, what can I get you? You know, and I was like, kind of had already gotten myself a few things because I didn't think he was going to try to get me anything because he's usually, like, stressed out about, oh, I don't know what to buy you as a gift. So I told him about it, and he got it for me for Christmas. <laughs> and, you guys, it's so much fun. And so it's, like, stuff like that. Like, even Barbies, I just – I still go past, you know, the aisles, and I'm just like, man, Barbies are so much fun. <laughs> If I had a kid, if I had a little girl that liked that kind of stuff, I mean, I guess I could have a little boy too that liked that stuff, but like, if I had a kid that was into that, I would be like, yeah, okay, and then they would get mad at me because I'd be like, mommy's playing, <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, this is mine, I bought it, <laughs> can you tell that I was like an only child for 10 years? <laughs> But I, as a kid, I love Barbies, and I still do. Like, they're just so much fun, and then you put them in little outfits and stuff. I know. That might be weird. I don't know if that's weird. Um, anyways. But, you know, I like playing games. I like being silly. I like doing fun stuff like that. And so I just like it when I see people embrace that side of them because it's like, okay, they're functioning people. They're adults. Like, they have lives. And that's the point that I'm, you know, trying to make, like, Obviously, we grow up, we become functioning members of society. We have to. Otherwise, you, you would just be a bum, right? So, like, but with that, it's like, okay, now I have disposable income. Like, what do I want to do with it? And to be like, oh, I can't buy that fun purse because people might judge me because I'm in my mid-30s. Like, that's not fair, who's buying that purse for their 12 year old, <laughs> you know, like how many, like those purses are made for adult women. Um, so anyways, I just think it's cool that I'm, I'm actually seeing it 
not just from the celebrity aspect of it, but also from like just normal people, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna kind of wrap it up. Um, I wanted to make this episode a little bit shorter because I know my episodes get a little long. I like to talk a lot. Um, but my ultimate thing, which I'm sure you guys are like, okay, where's she getting at? Or we know where she's getting at. Here it comes. I don't want the stigma of... A, I can't wear that because I'm too old. Or B, I can't go out and do that because I'm too old. Um, Me and my husband, we love the nightlife. We love live music. We love DJs. We love going out and talking to people. Um, It's just what we do. And we both really enjoy it. And so we were in Nashville like... Uh, a little while ago now because <laughs> we didn't we didn't go last summer really um well I went once and it was not fun um I hope stuff is opening up again because Nashville is such a blast but anyways we we're at Kid Rock's bar and they had the coolest rock band up there and Kid Rock's bar has like definite like different elevations and stuff and so like on each elevation they had like a musician and then like the lead singer, he just reminded me of, like, um, Mick Jagger or something, he was just, like, he was just walking around, just, like, how he was, how his personality was, like, on stage was just very much of that era, I guess, and so we were rocking out so hard, (laughs) we were having such a great time, and there was this couple that, like, were sitting down at the bar, So we were, like, standing next to the bar, and then they had, like, actual seats next, like, at the bar. And they were just, like, yeah, you know, and they were probably in their, like, late 40s, early 50s. And so this is my point. Like, they were kind of, like, they weren't out of place at all. Like, so I don't want to say that. Like, they were not out of place. But it's just, like, I could see people that age feeling insecure going into a bar like that. Because it's just like, oh, wow, there's all these young kids, and it's wild and loud and all of that, you know. But they totally, like, owned it and just, like, did their thing. And so we chatted with them for a little bit, and my mom was actually with us. And and my mom's kind of like a forever child, too. Or, like, she's just like, nope, I'm going to do my own thing. Like, I don't care what people think. Um, And she's like, she likes the nightlife and all that. But... She was like, she would talk to them a little bit more than we did. And she was like, when we left, um, you guys are totally going to be them when you are older. And we're like, what? And she's like, yeah, like they loved you guys. And they were like, yeah, that was us. Because we were like, rocking. (laughs) Instead of the music. And they were like, yeah, that was us when we were their age, you know. And it's like a part of them still really enjoys that. But maybe they don't want to like bang their head around, you know, like, and that's totally fine, like, I hope I'm still banging my head around at their age, but, you know, even now, when I do that, the next day, I'm like, oh, yeah, my neck is a little sore, (laughs) so I said, physically able to do things, I want to be able to do stuff, right, so anyways, um, yeah, like, I just want to be able to still, like, and I, and sometimes it's like, okay, once you get so old, like, once you're, like, past, like, the middle old age, like, middle age old, then it's, like, you're kind of quirky, and it's, like, kind of cool when you do stuff that's, like, trendy or whatever. I want to make it normal for, like, between the age of, like, your mid to late 30s until you're, like, obviously old. I want to make that normalized. Like, let's get rid of like, whatever stigmas are involved, society, shut up. If an old person or older person is at your bar, it doesn't mean it's not cool. It means it's very cool. It means that it's so cool that you got somebody in their mid-50s out on a Friday, Saturday night enjoying your bar. That's badass. So, my point is, I want to get rid of the stigma because as I climb that ladder of age... Um, me and my husband, we're not going to stop going out and I don't want to get dirty looks when I go out. I want people to embrace me and be like, yeah, she's that cool lady. 
<laughs> oh, okay. One more story. We went to, was it the Rainbow Room in LA? A Rainbow Club, Rainbow Room. Anyways, we saw that there and we just thought it was so badass. We we're just like, wow, like that place is a rock legend place. And there was this lady there. And she was totally 80s out and her like faux leather, her big hair, everything was tight on her. And she just stood in the middle of the room doing this kind of stuff. She looked tough. She looked like she was born there, but she was so cool. And so anyways, my point is that's what me and my husband want to be, especially if we don't have kids. I mean, what else are we going to do? You know, <laughs> we'll be like the mom and dad of the bars, like all the kids, the young kids know who we are. So they'll call us mom and dad. We'll be like, yeah, we'll like look out for all the kids. <gasps> you guys, that's what my future is going to be. I'm so excited. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, when we... When my husband retires from the Marine Corps and we try to figure out where we're going to, like, I have a very specific request because I love a metropolitan area and I need nightlife and I think he does too. So we got to go somewhere. I want an apartment in the city and I want a house out in like a rural country area. So I can have best of both worlds. We'll see you. <laughs> I might have to get a job. Um, no, just kidding. But I at least want to live in a metropolitan area because, yeah, I just, I love it. I just love going out. I love meeting people. I love being around people when I want to be. And I like coming back to my place and having my privacy when I want to be. So, anyways, um, yeah, I said I was going to wrap it up. I'm wrapping up. Uh Something to think about. I hope um, it wasn't too all over the place. I hope it wasn't too heady for you all. Um, you know, it's like old people still exist. We're all going to be old one day. Instead of fearing it, let's embrace it. Like these people are cool. They've lived such interesting lives. They've been through stuff, you know? Yeah, like old people are cool and they have interesting stories and they're really fun too. And I get it. Like, I'm not a fan of the old people that complain a lot or are extremely judgmental, you know, um, when they make comments on the young, like the youth and their clothing. So let's start a new thing, right? How about old people don't judge us and we won't judge you and we will embrace you and we will continue to love and, you know, learn from you as you age and as will other people from us. And that way we can all continue to have fun and do cool stuff and not get judged and just be what we want to be because you guys, we only have one life. So live it the way you want to live it. I mean, don't do anything illegal, but you know, like just have a good time. Don't worry about getting old. Um, because I'm not. And I mean, I'll be a, like, I'll be a pioneer. Fuck it. I don't care. I'll go out there at the bars and wear my cute clothes when, you know, I'm 70 years old. I don't care. I'm going to do it. I mean, unless I'm too tired or something. <laughs> We're going to start making, like, rock concerts at, like, 3 p.m. <laughs> Senior special. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Okay. Cheers, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you for sitting through another episode of The Board Housewife. Please comment. Please subscribe. Share with your friends. If you enjoy this, tell people about it. Okay? I would love that. And if you love it and you think you would love it, then we're all getting something out of it. So, no pressure. All right. Love you guys. Cheers. I'll see you soon. Bye.